This is Dr. Bill Staden. This first video shows the process of DNA replication. DNA replication occurs prior to cell division and is where all DNA gets copied. The first process I'm going to show you is DNA replication. DNA replication is the process where all the DNA gets copied prior to cell division. Now, DNA as you see in the textbook is all twisted up. The first enzyme that comes in is helicase and it arrives at something called the ori C locus and begins to untwist the DNA. It's useful to think about untwisting a rope and if you try to untwist a rope, the rope wants to snap back into its original position. DNA is the same way. When helicase untwists the DNA, it wants to snap back. To stop this from happening, another enzyme called DNA gyrase comes in and it will cut one of the strands and this allows the other strand to spin upon itself and what that does is it releases the tension caused by the untwisting. And you will start to get a replication fork forming. Now, the DNA doesn't like being separated like that and to keep it apart we have single-stranded binding proteins coming in and they attach to the two strands of DNA and hold them apart. Now we're ready to start making new DNA. But we don't start with new DNA. We start with an enzyme called primase that's actually going to synthesize RNA. Primase is going to create short pieces of RNA called primers. And we'll do that on both strands. The purpose of the primer is this pointy bit right here. At the pointy bit right there, there is a free 3' hydroxy group that is necessary for the enzymes we're going to talk about in a second to do their job. The next enzyme that comes in is DNA polymerase 3. And where you have this free 3' hydroxy, DNA polymerase 3 will perform synthesis. And it will start to add in DNA. As you can see, DNA is yellow in my model and RNA is pink. When the new DNA is added in, there's a free 3' hydroxy here that will allow further synthesis. and you will get continuous synthesis down this strand. Because you get continuous synthesis on this strand, this is called the leading strand. DNA polymerase 3 will also synthesize on the opposite strand. It will synthesize in that direction from this free 3' hydroxy. But the problem is in here, okay? DNA polymerase 3 can't add to that phosphate group. So what has to happen is primase has to come back in and start to synthesize another primer. Okay. Because you now have a free 3' hydroxy, DNA polymerase 3 can do its job. And what it will create is something called an Okazaki fragment. Now you have a partially synthesized DNA molecule, but you have these regions of RNA that need to be gotten rid of. For that, DNA polymerase 1 will come in and it will remove the RNA and synthesize in the appropriate DNA. Now, the DNA that was put in by DNA polymerase 1 and the Okazaki fragment that was created by DNA polymerase 3 are not attached here. A bond needs to be formed here and that's the job of DNA ligase. It will come in and form a bond between those two stretches of DNA. Now, DNA polymerase 3 has another job. 
in addition to coming along and synthesizing in the appropriate DNA, it also goes backwards and where it sees a mistake, it will remove the mistake and put in the appropriate DNA. The process of going backwards and removing mistakes and correcting them is called 3' to 5' exonuclease activity.